Sacraments 101 is a series which seeks to highlight the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church and to give its listeners a better understanding of the outward signs instituted by Christ to give his people grace. Your program host is Father Jim Corden. Hello and welcome to this edition of Sacraments 101. I'm Father Jim Corda. This is really the first show in our series on the sacraments, and I'm very happy to welcome to our show Pat Campbell, who is the Director of Worship and Music for Blessed Sacrament Church in Warren, Ohio. And Pat, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you, Father. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad that you could help us uh, begin this series to talk about sacraments, and I think primarily because of your role uh, in worship and music, uh, you come in contact very intimately with the celebration of the sacraments in the life of the church. Before we really get into our discussion, let's talk about what a sacrament is and what we mean by the word sacrament. Well, I was not one who had to memorize the Baltimore Catechism, although I'm about at the right age. We were doing more butterfly things in my uh, faith formation. But it's a sign that's um, you know, an effective uh, sign instituted by Christ to, uh, it, it brings us into a closer relationship with God. And it's also been entrusted to the church that these sacraments be celebrated. It's interesting because for us as uh, Catholics, uh, we like to look at the sacraments not only as uh, seven gifts that, that the Lord has given us through his ministry and from his ministry, uh, but also they really mark certain milestones in the lives of, of who we are as Catholics. Uh, obviously, we know baptism, the first sacrament that we celebrate. Uh, and what are the other two sacraments that we call the sacraments of initiation? And why do we call it the sacraments of initiation? Well, there would be the Eucharist. And I, it's, it's amazing to me that, um, that confirmation and Eucharist are these uh, the sacraments of initiation when you know, we've kind of, they're so spread out for us, it's hard to think of it that way. But they bring us in, uh, they bring us deeper into the faith, into the celebration of the faith, be it even though baptism and confirmation happen only once and we repeat Eucharist, uh, to be able to, be, to be, uh, come to the table, that's a very wonderful part of being part of our celebration of the faith each week. And then the other sacraments we celebrate, uh, we kind of define them as uh, perhaps the sacraments of forgiveness mm -hmm. and the sacraments of commitment. And let's talk about the two sacraments of forgiveness. Well, the sacrament, the, the obvious one would be reconciliation or penance, um, but also anointing of the sick, uh, which we just happen to celebrate uh, each year at all of our liturgies on one weekend. And it's very... Um, it's moving to realize that forgiveness is a part of that, that that is certainly only celebrated by a priest because it does include in, in that the forgiveness of sins. I don't know that we all recognize that. Sure. In the sacraments of commitment? Uh, would be holy orders or ordination and matrimony. You know, early on we talked about, and you had mentioned when I asked you about defining sacraments, that they're really something that come out of the life and the ministry of Jesus. And so for us as Catholics, there's a, an intimate encounter that we have uh, with, with the Lord, but also with one another. And let's talk about that communal aspect of the sacraments. You know, sacraments really are not celebrated singularly, just like with one person. They're always celebrated in communion. Why is that and why is that important for us as church? Well, I think it's something that's very important to us at church and as church and maybe something that we don't understand. It could, it could even make these uh, very important parts of our lives deeper for us. Uh, but I think since Christ uh, left these sacraments to us, and so he also left the church. And this is our connection to Jesus. This is the way we are uh, in contact with him more intimately. And so when we celebrate a sacrament, uh, to be doing that as the body of Christ, 
is a is something that can really make it something that gets our attention. And I, and I guess as a person who works in a parish, I'm sometimes saddened that they are not, you know, when someone calls, I would like a private baptism, or, sure. you know, that, that we even have language that is, is contrary to that connection. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I know in my, in my work as uh, someone who works in a parish also, mm -hmm. that oftentimes people do ask for uh, those private ceremonies for baptism or whatever. Uh, sometimes that's warranted, but, but on the whole, at least in my experience, the community really uh, enjoys seeing uh, the celebration of baptism, for example, mm -hmm. or when uh, the, the first communions are celebrated within a Sunday mass. Yes. So there's that, that specialness that's there as part of the sacrament, but they're also part of the celebration. And so that communal aspect is really important. And I, I believe that's what Jesus intended when these sacraments were instituted. They're not just for uh, uh, him and that person, yes. but they're meant for the community. And then there's this, the special encounter that we have with one another. And, and why is that important in the life of the church? And I think, especially as someone who works with liturgy and music, that uh, encounter with one another is important. I agree that it's very important and that it might be sometimes a missing piece uh, to understand that importance, that you know sometimes it's much easier to just do things on our own. But when we have to be there, and I am said have to, but when we're together with other people, the people we like, the people we may not like quite so much, when we are together as that body of Christ, which is uh, pretty and challenging, um, that we really do, we all are fed by that. We're all moved to a different place. And, and even as you said, to celebrate as a, as a group, uh, as a community, when you point that out to parents bringing a child for baptism, how much it means to the, to the church to see this little person coming into our, our uh, community, it's almost like an eye-opening experience for them. You know, I never thought about it from that side, from the communal side. And one thing you had mentioned um, earlier on in our discussion is um, some of the sacraments we, we celebrate uh, often. For example, uh, Holy Communion, the Eucharist. Uh, why is it important for us, not only it's obligatory, but why is it important for us to celebrate those sacraments uh, all the time? Oh, I think it's a special gift to be nourished uh, to think about being fed and know that that's something that we need, especially in today's world, we need as often as we can. Um, and so to be fed with our community, so fed by, uh, what is it that was it St. Augustine? You know, you're the body of, you're the body of receiving the body of Christ, you know, giving the body of Christ to the body of Christ. Um, to be reminded of that is just a gift to go out into the, into the world at the end of mass with maybe a little more energy, a little more faith. It's interesting that you mentioned St. Augustine because I remember at a uh, retreat once, uh, the retreat master said, when you come forward to communion to receive the body of Christ, you will hear the body of Christ. And we always respond, amen. Instead of responding, amen, respond, we are. Ah. So there's that, that sense that reminding us that yes, we are the body of Christ. Amen, I believe this, but we are the body of Christ. And how often sometimes we don't think of that. That's very true. Uh, and, uh, you know, to take it a step further, um, we are the body of Christ, not just the Pope and the priests and the bishops and the nuns, but all of us yes. uh, as part of the church, as baptized members of the church, are part of the body of Christ. And so these celebrations that happen within our Catholic Christian lives uh, kind of recall certain important milestones that, that we celebrate and that we have. Let's go to the Sacrament of Confirmation. Um, we know that in many dioceses around the country that's celebrated in different ages at different times within one's life. Uh, we know in our own diocese it has had changed over the years uh, from uh, eighth grade to uh, senior year in high school and then back to eighth grade. 
I remember uh, in my younger days that I received confirmation uh, in third grade. So the sacraments really of initiation that I received, received as an infant and child were kind of within the span of uh, maybe eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. Now those are really extended uh, until young adulthood, really. Uh, is it important for us to understand why we celebrate sacraments? Oh. And why is that important for us? Well, I, I guess the best example for me is to talk about confirmation as a sacrament of initiation. And anytime you go into a club, you know, and you want, and you're, they want to initiate you. They teach you things. They, I mean, maybe there's a secret handshake. Maybe there's all kinds of stuff that you can't wait to do. You want to get to that point to be initiated and be part of that group. Um, I was confirmed in second grade <laughs> in Kansas City. Um, and it was just an, a very, so I don't remember too much about that. But the idea that you were going to be, I remember being a soldier for Christ. I remember being an adult in the church was not quite stressed as much. But the idea that this was, now I'm going to be a full member. And then if, if we don't understand that importance, if we don't understand that responsibility, then we don't come back. And I think as these, the, the great wisdom of the sacraments being you know, spread out, marking these places in our life, it's going to help keep us engaged because each time we're getting a new invitation. We're getting a new invitation from the Lord. Remember my love for you and let's, let's exchange some of that. We're down to two minutes uh, of our first segment. Let's go back to that word invitation because you know, oftentimes the sacraments are an invitation uh, for us. They're gifts for us, but they're also an invitation. Uh, how often is it that, that perhaps we don't open that invitation and respond? And what would, uh, would be a better response for us as Catholic Christians in receiving an opening and responding to that invitation? Well, I, I read somewhere recently about the a comparison of this invitation to almost that our Emmaus journey, that here we are walking along and here's the Lord. We may not always recognize the Lord, but then mm -hmm. those, those words, they're resonating with us. It could just, uh, it could change, well, it could change our lives. <clears throat> yeah. We're gonna take a quick break, but uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the sacraments in just a moment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. I don't dream like you. I don't have the same skin as you. I don't wear my hair like you. I don't dance like you. I don't come from the same place as you. But I will give you CPR. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Whether it's passing on medicine, a blanket, or something as simple as a glass of water, that's how compassion works. And that's how Mary Knoll works, hand to hand to hand. For nearly a hundred years, Mary Knoll's been passing on your help to the priests and brothers working in 26 countries around the world. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization, dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, serving the world's poor and powerless. And that's how it works. Compassion flows from your hand to the hand of someone in need. Hand to hand to hand. That's Mary Knoll. 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 Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Pat Campbell about the sacraments in the life of the church. You know, one word that uh, we oftentimes encounter when we think of the sacraments is the word, uh, they're a Christian rite. Now it's not R-I-G-H-T, but it's R-I-T-E. Can you explain that word rite and what it means? Well, our, our, our liturgy involves rites. This is a pattern of things that we, of steps that we take, different uh, signs and symbols that are involved. And I guess the rite is always 
taking us toward um, the, the, that leads us to the celebration. And I guess the rite is part of the celebration, but it's something that we do all the time in our Christian life. You had mentioned the word symbols and that uh, we know that uh, in the life of the church, there are many symbols that we use uh, to designate certain things. And also um, there's a word that we use that's really different from the seven sacraments that we celebrate. And that's the word sacramentals. There are certain sacramentals in the life of the church that are used, for example, within the sacraments, mm -hmm. but are not uh, sacraments. So what would be some of those sacramentals that would make up the sacraments that we would celebrate um, in the church? Well, the sign of, I guess the sign of the cross as the most mm -hmm. obvious one, where it's not something instituted by Christ, but sort of instituted by the church. Mm -hmm. um, the actions that we use, the uh, uh, candle, the b baptismal candle, um, our oils that we use, those, those things would all be, ne we use them for the sacrament, but they are not the sacrament themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I, thinking of, uh, in mind also like water oh. <laughs> was, is, is one of the, yes. uh, the great uh, symbols and sacramentals in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. Obviously, every time we enter the church and when we leave the church, we're reminded with uh, dipping our finger into the, um, the water fonts of our baptism and also of our dying with Christ and rising with him. And I'd like to use that, that image. And, and I talked to uh, someone in one of our other segments about the image of dying and rising with Christ because really the sacraments uh, engage us in that special relationship of Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, why is that image and that mystery so important for us when we talk about celebrating the sacraments and aligning oneself and ourselves to his death and resurrection? I think the death and resurrection of Christ is where our hope from the place where our hope comes from. And so to know that um, these, these sacraments that we celebrate through our life also mark parts of Christ's life. And so the relationship is, becomes clearer that we are tied to Christ in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Let's talk also, let's go back to that communal aspect, because I think oftentimes we, we tend to um, miss out on understanding that fully. Uh, let's, let's talk about uh, the sacrament of the Eucharist, and we're going to talk about that more specifically in another segment, but let's use that as an example, that sacrament. Why is the communal aspect so important in the celebration of the Eucharist? We're not on the journey alone, and to, to uh, be there for the whole, to, to be with our community, through this whole process of the celebration of the Mass, say if we're taking the Eucharist, and then to suddenly go into uh, me and God um, and, and like the rest of the people there aren't influencing us, aren't, uh, we don't really care about them, that would be a going against what we why we celebrate together. So I think that, that we, need, we need one another and we get strength from them. We can also be reminded sometimes of what other people are bearing um, that can help us to put our life in a, in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. The community is, is key, and, and I think that's a Vatican II realization. And so uh, just as with many things from Vatican II, we're still, we're, we're still working on that. Mm -hmm. And I think like many things, it's evolving and we're yes. getting more uh, in tune with what it's all about. Let's face it, it's only been a little over 50 years, uh, which uh, in church time is a relatively <laughs> yes. short period of time. Yes, but like, for, for instance, the anointing of the sick, to think about that as just a, a thing between, like pr the father's gonna go in and anoint my loved one, so I'll wait out here in the hall. Oh. Yes. There's, there's so much more that that could be with mm -hmm. the involvement of the community. And that community may be the family only in a difficult situation, say in a hospital. Mm -hmm. But there's so much there that we could uh, tap into that could make faith more real. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many times I hear this. 
Uh, for example, on a weekend, if I've celebrated baptism within the context of the Sunday liturgy, uh, many people come afterwards and say, oh, Father, that was so wonderful to see that or experience that. Why is it so important to see this newly baptized life within the life of a community? It means we're going on. It means we're continuing. Um, it's not, our faith isn't dead. There's hope. And, and, and I think in a world where there are many, many challenges, to see that uh, is, is a gift in itself. And for, for, those, for, for folks who are older and maybe more isolated, the community is a wonderful thing. But then to see, I mean, you see a baby or a little person and your whole, your whole view has changed. And I think you're reminded of so many things in your past. And that's, isn't that what we do in church all the time? We call back our memories and we look toward the future. Exactly. Let's go back to that whole concept of sacraments as relationship. You know, that, that's an interesting word, relationship, because uh, as Catholics, even that word Catholic designates that, that it's universal. So there's a, a, a community that's, that's part of who we are. And this relationship is not just me and Jesus, but it's uh, we in Jesus. You know, I kind of look at the symbol of the cross. The cross is um, uh, vertical and horizontal. Yes. So it's me and the Lord, but it's also me and others within this faith community. And that relationship, uh, and I think you had mentioned it at one point, that it's people we know and like, but it's also people we don't know or may have an aversion to that are this part of this community. Uh, and why is this relational aspect of the sacraments so crucial and important for the life of the church? Well, in Jesus' life, the relationships, uh, you know, he, he, didn't he want to do most of these things? He did it in front of other people, with other people, so that what was, what was done was not like, oh, look at me, I'm doing this, aren't I great? But more that this is what, I'm helping this person with God's help, you are going to help other people. Um, that it, that it's just part of who we are, um, and and holy as holy as I might be on my own, once I'm in the car and having a little trouble in the traffic, uh, I have still to remember that all these folks were created in God's image too. So I think there's a challenge to it, but there's also a comfort in in that community. We're down to the last five minutes of our time together. Um, is there anything in particular in your experience uh, when you work with uh, music and liturgy that stand out for you in your experience of celebrating the sacraments? And has that changed over the years as you, have be, as you minister in the life of the church? Oh, yes, if, if I think of uh, positive, really positive change. I would, I would have to say celebrating the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil is, is like a high point. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a high point, even if nothing else would work <laughs> on that evening. Um, it's just something that, that you, you, it, nothing compares to the, the, you feel kind of like the tension that's happening as, as this uh, liturgy goes on. But then when these folks who have, who have publicly made this journey as adults, mm -hmm. making this choice to be baptized, um, it's, that's, I would say that's a high point. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and something else that is part of my work that I think is challenging as a baptismal preparation person, um, I, I, I'm challenged to find ways to talk about the sacraments that engage people and help these young parents who are, who are probably there because they held this little person and realized, whoa, <laughs> I need all the help I can get. They come back, they have the child baptized. I want them to stay. I want them to find home so that they, they can see the community helping the community as support, the community as feeding them, instead of I'll see you when it's time for the next mm -hmm. of these, these life-changing events. Well, you know, it's so, it's so important for us um, to be people who invite others as well. Always. You know, it's not just the Lord who extends an invitation, but also his people extend an invitation. And, and oftentimes when we gather to celebrate the sacraments, 
we tend to forget of our uh, responsibility mm -hmm. to, to do that and to carry that on. And um, in your experience also, what would be fundamentally uh, something that you would encourage folks to remember when they gather to celebrate any sacrament? I guess it would be the gratitude for the gift uh, that this comes with no, you know, we may as a church have great wishes for people to participate regularly or whatever it might be. But as far as, as God is concerned, this is a gift of grace and uh, to, to be able to be grateful for that. And then and trust that it's going to work in all of us who are gathered. I guess that would be my, my hopeful point because I think it, it's, it gives us a chance for the future. Something, if we change a little bit, something's going to be different. And then in, in the last two minutes of our time together, I'd like to ask you personally about your sacrament of commitment in marriage, mm -hmm. uh, how you celebrate that, why that is so important, and what that has done for you in your married life. Oh, <laughs> that's 35 years now. Um, and my husband wasn't, wasn't Catholic at the time. He was a very good roadie, though, at the time I played guitar, and he would carry things. And he, and, and he had been a churchgoer. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But the church has always been um, important in our relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and then as we moved far away from family, the church became even more of an anchor for us. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the, the idea of knowing that we did commit to one another for our, our lives um, has made, you know, there are trying times, but that commitment and then knowing too that that commitment was made with, with Jesus too, that we are, we're not alone and we have, we have a great help. Um, but we also, and we also have a community that supports us. So, and as I watch my children growing, having difficulty in relationships and in this different world, I, I wish there were a way that, with all our sacraments, but uh, certainly with the matrimony, that there would be a way that we can let people know we, as a church, support them in, in their challenges. Well, Pat Campbell, thank you so much for your uh, sharing of your experiences, but also uh, sharing with the folks that are with us about the importance of the sacraments in the life of the church, their relational aspect, their communal aspect, but also that their celebratory events uh, for who we are in particular milestones in our lives as Catholics. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Sacraments 101 was a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father Jim Corda.